Good day. Today's discussion topic is the digitization of the global organic supply chain and how it will help overcome the next pandemics. To reveal it, we'll start with sustainable trends in the rapidly growing organic market. I will say a few words about the From Farm to Fork EU program, how it influences trade strategies, what business opportunities will be available how businesses nowadays certify their products, what issues they face, what certification means for customers today, and what it will mean tomorrow, how IoT and digitization can improve certification, green scoring, what it is, how it can help business to cut down certification expenses, how it can help customers choose products, and how the digitized certification will comply with the global sustainability goals. In the end, we will summarize and understand how all these elements are interconnected, what objectives they can cover, including overcoming subsequent pandemics. A few words about the speaker. My name is Alexey Anshakov. In recent years, I've been holding the C-level positions, advising and mentoring various high-tech startups in Europe. I specialize in blockchain, semantic web, IoT, Big Data, Machine Learning, and Artificial Intelligence. I am a radial ecology expert by education and graduated from the International Sakharov Environmental Institute. Some time ago, I got a chance to combine my technical knowledge with ecological education as CEO of GreenBee. GreenBee's goal is to become the number one platform for all green movement participants from non-commercial funds to eco-businesses. The platform is based on the European From Far to Fork program, which consists of five main goals. Providing access to healthy, affordable, and sustainable food, tackle climate change, protect the environment and preserve biodiversity, ensure a fair economic return in the supply chain, increase organic farming, to achieve these goals, the European Union ran a five-step strategy. The first one, create a food environment that makes a healthy and sustainable choice the easy choice. One out of five deaths were attributed to unhealthy diets in 2017. A healthy, plant-based diet reduces the risk of life-threatening diseases and the environmental impact of our food system. To cover the first goal, there are over 400,000 organic producers in Europe. About 40% of them are SMEs. Organic is one of the few market segments that increases rather than slowed down its growth rate during the COVID crisis. During the last 20 years, it has grown tenfold and continue its vigorous progression. The number of consumers of eco products is also grown. In the UK alone, the number of vegetarians and vegans for the last three years grew over 50 and 100% respectively. Surveys show that over 60% of customers would give preference to natural products. Were they affordable and were the customers confident in their organic origin. This brings us to the second element of the European Sustainable Developmental Strategy, labeling. It is labeling that is the main tool for the conscious choice of goods for the buyers today. The Commission will propose mandatory front-of-pack nutritional information and develop the Sustainable Food Labeling Framework that also covers the environmental and social aspects of food products. Today's certification is offered by almost 500 eco labels across the world. However, the approach is demanding for SMEs and farmers. It is slow, expensive, requires certification, and is non-transparent for customers. While some businesses spend a lot of time, efforts, and money to obtain the desired labels, Others simply add unsubstantiated organic and 100% eco labels on their goods as a sales pitch. As a result, some customers get confused when choosing goods, while others ignore the label factor 
due to the lack of confidence. On the whole, unfair businesses draw profits to fooling customers by attaching various labels while honest producers invest a lot of resources into the certification that only a small part of customers know about and trust. The next problem that the European Union wants to solve is a third element of the strategy, reducing food waste. According to experts, about half of the food is wasted. This is not only a loss of money, what is much more important is a loss of energy and natural resources, impoverishment and pollution of soil, water and air. The eternal question arises, what shall we do? The solution to all of these problems is within the framework of the fourth element of the strategy. The European Union invests heavily into R&D, and knowledge transfer will be essential. The CAPS Farm Technology Services and Farm Sustainability Data Network will be instrumental in assisting farmers in the transition. At Green B, we're also working on a tool that will help achieve the goal. It will be a decentralized supply chain digitization system. It is based on blockchain, which will ensure equality of rights for all network participants. The purpose of the system is to provide electronic passport products and companies. E-passports will make certification cheaper, which means organic products will become more affordable. In addition to issuing e-passports, supply chain digitization will help achieve the fifth and final element of the European From Farm to Fork program. It's promoting the global transition. The digitization of the supply chain will lead to a global base of eco product manufacturers and suppliers. The database will become an invaluable B2B tool for finding partners and creating an optimal supply chain. A bonus for businesses and manufacturers will be the opportunity to sell data in which third-party services and government agencies may be interested. The information is extremely valuable for monitoring services as well as companies that provide various services to organic producers, fertilizing and tilling the soil, harvesting, logistics, sale of products, etc. The green scoring system we are developing will become the tool for evaluating businesses in the database and the key element of the promotion strategy. Green scoring measures the sustainability level of each member of the network and allows rating actors in terms of their commitment to the EU Sustainable Developmental Goals program, the percent of clean energy usage and carbon footprint, water conservation methods, waste level, recycling techniques, etc. At the initial stage, green scoring will not replace certification but will allow small businesses to effectively solve the problem of consumer confidence in the sustainable level of their products. Later on, the automation of data collection will simplify and speed up the assessment process, which means it will reduce costs for echo labels, ultimately resulting in cheaper certification and thus cheaper products for buyers. As a result, Buyers will be able to easily track all the data on the label, which means they can trust it. This will increase competitiveness in the market and make it more affordable for the buyer. Ultimately, people's health will improve and the risks of disease will be mitigated. How does it work? We will provide a sensor kit, which can be installed in no time. So there will be various sensors capable of monitoring soil pH temperature, humidity, pesticide levels, indicators of water and air, carrier vehicle emission, travel time, energy consumption, and much more. We will not consider here technical nuances, anti-fraud methods, etc. It's enough to say only that the system will collect live data and store metadata on the blockchain. This metadata will allow everybody to verify and make sure the data provided by green scoring is valid. 
It shall be specifically mentioned that the system is aimed not so much at control as at helping the participants. For example, this will make it possible to certify fields and help farmers exploit soil more efficiently and preserve their fertility. Warehouse owners will be able to store products more efficiently with optimal humidity and temperature, while carriers will be able to track the geoposition and condition of their vehicles, and so forth. Thanks to our service, each agent, a farmer, a carrier, a warehouse, a store, etc., throughout the entire supply chain, will be able to register the desired data automatically or manually, which days are then securely stored in the blockchain and subsequently cannot be changed by anyone. Producers may print out unique QR codes from their profiles and attach them to the products. Customers will scan the codes with their phones and see the product rating automatically generated based on the live data from the field it was grown at. The content of pesticides in the soil, harvest date, country of origin, producer's info, etc. All this will allow the buyer to track data throughout the entire supply chain and make sure that the products are original, sustainable in production, delivery, storage, etc. As a result, each product or service will have one number from 1 to 100 which will be automatically and objectively calculated based on all stages that it went through from mining or obtaining raw materials for production to the shelf in the store. As a result, clients will have a simple and reliable tool that will allow them to choose quickly and efficiently among a variety of goods and services the most consistent with the values of the buyer. Additionally, it should be noted that producers will be able to keep accounts of and track the amount, time, type, and location of the purchased products in real time, which will help optimize the logistics and the supply chain in general. According to the Net Zero report, SMEs are much more likely to be asked by customers and service users to reduce the environmental impact than three years ago. Consumers are more aware of the impact of their activities on the environment and just offering good products and customer service doesn't satisfy them anymore. They want to understand where the product came from and how the manufacturing process can help in fighting against greenhouse emissions of gases. They are demanding and opting for green products that are not only safer for them to use but also environmentally friendly. In summary, SMEs that can demonstrate and articulate their commitment to reducing their carbon footprint in a measurable and quantifiable manner will be more competitive in the current global marketplace, where the major buyers also have an incentive to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. These buyers have set corporate net zero targets and are focusing their attention on achieving their objectives by buying their goods or services from businesses that have similar net zero commitments. The potential impact of the supply chain digitization can be divided into short term, quick access of consumers to the required information to make a conscious choice of products, promotion of healthy products of high quality. Tracking the process of generating added values throughout the entire supply chain. And a greenwashing, transparent eco labeling and support of SMEs. The significant competitive advantage of small business and local markets as compared to transatlantic corporation. And long term, farmlets use optimization across the world. Provision of governmental agencies and research centers with valuable information for the development of soil fertility preservation strategy. Supply chain optimization, what grows, where, and in what quantities. Identification of increased demand for productivity. 
oversupply of products, reduction of lost products due to the natural shelf life of fresh vegetables and fruits, potentially high impact on mitigating risks of COVID, cancer, etc. Experts say a healthy diet can reduce the risk of disease by 20%. According to pessimistic forecasts, humanity is doomed to live with COVID as it lives with the flu and we will be faced with new strains every year. In this case, even taking into account the large-scale vaccination, even before the second half of the century, the participants of the digital supply chain, thanks to the increase in the availability of organic food and the strengthening of human immunity, will save the world economy the first trillion euro. With the increase in the number of publications, grows the number of people giving preferences to organic food. To satisfy the fast-growing demand, it is necessary to pursue a sensitive soil usage policy to maintain its fertility. Efficient management is needed, too, to grow more crops within the same area. Automation and digitization are key components of success in this regard. Our solution capability will also contribute to the reduction of green gas emission. Food vertical generates about 26%. The optimization of the supply chain will assist in reducing food waste, which generates about 6% of green gas emission. Thus, the project will have a considerable impact. It will assist in reducing water consumption, the level of pollution and waste. It will improve access to healthy food, hence it will have a positive effect on human health, etc. Moreover, Automated 24-hour collection of data will help to make a coherent picture of soil usage in the world, how its fertility changes over time, what is growing, where and at what volumes and so forth. In 5 to 10 years, with the growth of the farmland areas covered by our monitoring system considering the emerging trends, accumulated data will enable us to make sound forecast of changes. In the long run, the data will supplement agricultural databases of the European Union and thus will have the potential to improve the government progress development strategy. We will provide guidelines to those eager to join the sustainable movement and do a significant impact on reaching the European Union sustainable development goals. In the future, companies will be able to get certification through third parties and also to track the general tendencies of sustainable goal proliferation across Europe. Finally, I would like to emphasize that my speech was only the positive side of eco-movement, but we are aware that things are not that cheerful. Simultaneously with solving big problems, what we described also creates new ones. This includes the expansion of crop plants for organic food, which leads to deforestation, erosion, and soil degradation. The pursuit for clean energy, in fact, turns into big problems associated with heavy metal pollution of the environment during the extraction of materials and the production of batteries and solar cells. So we are aware that innovation shall be coupled with a reasonable implementation and an increase in the overall level of sustainability education. Therefore, we will be glad to cooperate with commercial and non-commercial funds, universities, eco-labels, producers, investors, and all of those who are interested in the information provided. We will especially be glad to see companies that implement holacracy or sociocracy. Thank you for your attention, and I will be glad to answer your questions.